Welcome to Meeple Station, and today we're going to be doing a revisit of Barbarians the Evasion, but by request from Siegfried131 on the YouTube comments, he was wondering about the hunt expansion that goes with Barbarians the Invasion, which I do believe does come with the base game Barbarians the Invasion. It's just kind of like another variant that you can add on to the game. And so something I do want to point out right off the bat is that if you don't know how to play Barbarians the Invasion, or if you don't have a good idea of how to play it, then I encourage you to go ahead and hit the eye on the top right corner of, of your screen to watch the original gameplay that I already have of this game. And um, so, so thanks to Siegfried131 for, uh, for requesting the uh, Barbarians the Invasion Hunt expansion to be played. I'm more than happy to try to comply with any requests that you guys leave in the comments. If you have any requests of any gameplay videos or expansions, I'll try to see if I can do them. Well, okay, well, let's see what's different with the Hunt expansion added on to Barbarians the Invasion, the base game. Well, right off the bat, you'll see that we're using the other side of the map because this a map is double-sided, and the gameplay we use is the other side. Um, and this is the side that we're going to use this time. We, start out, we still start off at Fenian Island, but there is different islands um, on this map right here, and the regions are kind of uh, arranged a little bit differently. And uh, we still have uh, the war tokens out here. You can still make war on here, but now there are hunt tokens that, that we can go and achieve. If we can move our Skull Crusher icons right here, this is also new. If we can move our Skull Crusher minis onto one of these hunt tokens on one of these regions, then we'll be able to hunt a beast or a monster in those specific regions. So like for example, if, uh, if we were to go right here, like right here at the very big, on the top of the volcano, there is a Skull Crusher icon. This is one of the new icon actions that we can do on the volcano. So if you move your Skull Crusher, you get to move your Skull Crusher twice, get a resource of any, of any type. So let's say if I were to move it right here. Um, the rule is, is that you can move your Skull Crusher twice to any adjacent region from where you started off from. So we can move it here once, and our second move can be right here. That's twice. And, um, and so we just met up with this hunt token right here, which corresponds to this mountain region. So if we look on the mountain region, we still have the battling deck, but right below it corresponds with this mountain beast card, which is a giant bear. Now, in order to, uh, to be able to hunt down this bear, you have to survive through two different battle cards. And if you survive through those two battle cards, then you'll be able to gain five victory points according to which island you're on. So like this island um, is a one victory point, so one times five will give us five victory points. Well, let's say this bear popped up um, and the token is all the way out here, which will happen later in the game. If you make it all the way out here, it'll be four times five. So, so as, as the game goes on, you'll get more and more victory points as you start slaying these beasts on each of the island. So once this one's slain, it's going to go on to the next island right here. And, and then so on as each beast is slain. Okay? And then you'll, not only do you gain victory points, but you also gain um, a benefit whenever you do war. For this specific one, um, whenever you do a war action on a mountain region or a swamp region, then you will be able to, um, you could do a, a, a war with one less battle of that type. So if you had a, if you had a, a war in a mountain region, you, could have, you get to do one less battle, um, even according to whatever you are in the knowledge factions there. Well, okay. So that's kind of a little bit of how that works. So we'll get into that here in a bit. And then, um, let's see. We are also going to be playing... Well, so we're going to be doing a two-player game, just to point out. I'm going to be the green faction here. And then player two is going to be the red faction. And something else that I'm going to add into this gameplay is I'm going to be playing with the clan powers. And so each, each clan has its own specific power. And so this clan... Um, whenever it reaches to the third phase, which is the feast and demon phase, 
and, and kind of like uh, restocking up on, the, on, the, on all these cards. Um, so it, it indicates right here that for each demon or with each feast phase, you can do it twice. That's right, you get to do the demon effect or the feast effects twice in a row, if you wish to. So like, for example, you can mix and match these as however you want to. You could at first do, spend one of each resource to get nine victory points, and then for your second one, you could take resources, or you could redo this one again and get 18 points possibly, or you could spend one of each of these resources, food, wood, and iron, to gain four victory points. So you can mix and match however you want to. So that's a very cool uh, uh, clan power there. Meanwhile, the red faction, his clan power is with war. So whenever you draw a battle card, when you're in war, you can choose to keep that battle card, or you can choose to discard that battle card, because maybe you have to spend a ton of resources in order to win that battle, and you don't want to have to do that. Well, you could just go ahead and discard it and draw a new card. And you can do that once per battle. So that's very, very, uh, also very cool, um, cool clan power. Now, there's uh, also other clan powers that you can that you can do. Like the blue faction deals with war chiefs, that you can do the war chief effect twice. Or with the yellow faction, you get to gain two resources before the before each round. Two resources of your choice. And so those are those clan factions, just to point out. Now, um, and then also on top of that, there is more. I'm going to be playing with the personal um, objective cards, which is this right here. So my objective card is to, uh, the more milestones that I pass on the honor track, the more end game bonus, uh, end game bonus victory points I'm going to gain. Or I can choose to go ahead and just discard this card any time during the game. And then that means I wouldn't have these endgame points, but I would get four honor points automatically, just like that. And then player two has one, but specifically for knowledge and tactics. The more knowledge he has in tactics, the more victory points he'll get at the end of the game. Or if he discards this card and just doesn't want to have to deal with those endgame victory points, he can just go ahead and gain two knowledge tactics right there and then. And there's still even more modules that I'm not going to play with. Um, like there's milestone a milestone module that you can, um, that you can put out and, re and replace these type of milestones. Most of them are the same, but you get to change the order of the milestones in which they happen. And some of them are slightly different. Or there's these magma tokens that I'm not going to play with as well. These magma tokens, you actually put these onto the volcano. And whenever you land on one of these magma tokens, each one of your opponents um, has to lose that specific resource. So like if I put, ended up putting my champion where this magma token was, everyone has to lose one stone resource. Or everyone has to lose one iron. And everyone has to lose one archer. So I'm not going to play with that just because um, I don't have to deal with losing resources throughout this gameplay. I want to be able to show you everything that I can possibly show you in this um, short little gameplay. All right, let me just put those aside. And okay, well we have everything set up. I already have my knowledge in the economics and building cards. And then uh, uh, player two chose to not place two tokens down, but decided to go two steps already into being um, smarter against this black faction in war. Well, all right. I'm gonna point out um, some any thoughts that I have throughout this whole gameplay. I'm not going to be doing any final thoughts for specifically for the Hunt expansion, but I'll point out some stuff that, that maybe I, I, I didn't quite enjoy. But overall, this expansion is marvelous and is great for adding variability and, and replayability into the game. Well, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to place my first champion here <clears throat> onto the volcano. And you know what? I am going to do I'm going to move my Skull Crusher to be able to do, try to do a hunt. So I get to move my Skull Crusher twice, and I get any one, uh, any one resources, resource that I wish. So let's go ahead and do the resource. Let's go ahead and gain one stone, uh, one stone resource, 
and now I get to move my skull crusher to adjacent spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and move my skull crusher to this adjacent space as my first uh, as my first step, and then to right here as my second step. Now, this is on a separate island. With whenever it comes to the hunt, it does not matter what you have in technology whatsoever. With battling, with uh, with these warships or anything like that, it does not matter. These don't matter at all. I can always move out. You can always move out your skull crusher out to any island that you want to, as long as you move into adjacent regions um, on the map. And so that's why I can already move out to here, even though I have no knowledge at all on warships. Okay, so I landed in, in, a, in a swamp region with this uh, beast token here. So that means I get to do a, uh, a battle against the beast in the swamps, and let's look to see what it is. It is this swamp zombie, it looks like. So with this swamp zombie, I have to survive through one battle against it, um, with, uh, I, I still use these battle cards here, <clears throat> and if I'm victorious, then I'm going to gain three victory points times whatever island it is, so it is times one, so I'm going to get three victory points if I'm successful in beating it, and um, it becomes a trophy. And how I know it's a trophy is because it has a one-time use um, spendable card action type thing. It's a free action and I'd get six of any resource that I wish. So, um, so that's what that indicates right here. This is a trophy, and this one is that you actually tame the beast, and this becomes a benefit for war. Okay, so, as, as an, just like in war, before you enter a battle, you can choose to um, go ahead and, and gain any troops, spend the resources that you want to gain any troops that you want. And so let's see. So we know that um, with these swamp cards, it's possible that we could, we could have to lose an archer or we might lose a berserker or a raider. So we might want to move up um, one, maybe one of each, because it's possible I could lose one of each and then I'd, I'd be pretty low in troops after that. I mean, it's only one battle, but let's go ahead and just play it safe and spend the resources that we need. So let's spend um, one food and one wood so one food, one wood, to move up an archer, and then one wood and an iron, so an iron and a wood, and then the raiders is food and iron, but you know what, let's go ahead and pray to our god and gain a raider for free. So we gain a raider for free, and I don't think I, don't think I moved up on him yet. But I spent the resources, so so we move it up, uh, one of each, one of each soldier there. So I think we are ready to st try to battle this zombie. So let's go ahead and turn over the card, and see what we got. Hey, we got pretty lucky. We only have to spend one raider, and we are successful in defeating this monster right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and spend our one raider. And that makes us victorious in defeating this swamp zombie. And now we get to keep the trophy of six resources of, of any type to gain whenever we choose to discard this, uh, this trophy card. So there we go. And if you ever are not able, so if you're not able to defeat a monster when you choose to do a hunt, then the monster escapes. There is no penalty like there is in war. Um, if, you ever to, if you were to ever gain any resources that are indicated at the bottom, you can't do that during a hunt because uh, you're, not hunt, you're not trying to conquer a faction out there which you're technically like stealing the resources. And if there's never an overkill, you can't do that either when doing a hunt um, action. So that was a successful hunt. And as you can imagine, if, if we were like out to here on uh, Conrath Island, and we had run across that, that zombie there, then it would have been um, three, victory, three victory points times three for, uh, for Karth Iron Island. Um, so that would have been possibly nine victory points if the zombie had popped up here. But the zombie didn't pop up there, it popped up at this first island. And what we do is there's no more beast on this island and it's gonna move to the next swamp region 
which is on uh, Breath Island. There, and that monster is going to be, wow, this like giant serpent swamp monster. <laughs> and you have to do three battles in order to defeat this monster. And this is five victory points. So this is gonna be five victory points times two. So that's gonna be 10 victory points to take down this monster. So that's a pretty big deal. And then if you ever discard this trophy, you'll get three of those knowledge or three of those knowledge. Wow, so that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty sweet. So maybe I might want to think about just chasing down all these swamp monsters to get higher and higher benefits if I want to. Okay. All right, so we did that, and that concluded that. Did I move up on the victory points? I should move up three victory points, and I did not yet. And I started off on three just for my god card. So I got six victory points now. And that should conclude my turn. Yep. All right, so that was my first action. That was a pretty big move. Now it's on to player two. So player two, hmm, what does player two want to do? Well, he wants to definitely work on his personal goal here to try to collect as much of tactic knowledge as he can. So he's going to go ahead and go right here. He's going to get one tactic knowledge and a god card. He has to pay for it, of course. So he'll get one tactic knowledge. And I think what he's going to do, because... As you can see, there's a six victory point chip for conquering this black faction on, on this region here. And so he really wants to do that, I think, very fast. So he's going to go ahead and move up again on tactics against this black faction. So now he only has to do three battles. And so he did that, and he's going to get himself a god card. So here's our god cards out on display right now. And... You know what? To help him out with battling, he's going to go ahead and take this one. So spend any one resource to take this one here. When he spends this one, he'll be able to increase his soldiers up one step for each, for each one of those. So he'll do that. And, whoops, looks like I didn't set that up correctly. That should all be on three. And so he'll spend, go ahead and spend one gold as his one resource to be able to get this god card. And he'll get three victory points for doing that. So one, two, three. There we go. And I think that was his turn. Yep. There we go. So now back to me. What do I want to do with my second, uh, with my second worker? Well, so we can uh, get some knowledge. We can move our skull crusher again if we wanted to, but we would have to do three battles in order to, to do that one. And our resources are kind of scattered now. And I don't know, maybe we could possibly do that. We could possibly do that. Or we could go here and get some honor, which would work towards our personal goal right here. And then we can, we can kind of get resources, build up our resources again. I think I do like that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and go here and get one honor and one food and one iron. So we moved up on the honor track. And as you can see here, it is a little bit tougher actually to get honor on this, uh, on this hunt expansion I noticed because this is right here. This is the only worker placement spot that's gonna give you honor on the whole board besides this outer ring action right here. And, and like the, uh, on the, the base game side of the, of the volcano on the other side, there is, there is ways that you can trade in resources for honor, but we don't have that choice here on this side of the, on this side of the volcano board. So we're gonna try to take that opportunity to get as much honor as we can. Of course, you can always uh, get some war chiefs to also get some honor points from buying war chiefs. Okay, so we moved up to the honor. We need one food and one iron, and we're gonna gain an additional food for being on this on the knowledge track. So we'll get two food. One, two. And there's one iron, I believe. Yep, one iron. We'll gain one iron right there. Okay, but well there's our turn. So now we are moving a little bit closer to trying to get some more of those milestones. We've almost made one milestone. And so second player's turn. 
to place his second worker. So, what's he want to do? Ooh, well he can, uh, he can, he too can get some honor right here, or he can do a war action. But you know what? He's going to go right here to get some knowledge. Or sorry, no, he wouldn't be able to go out here because he's. <laughs> this sector is pointing out to, towards these two. He can build a building or get those resources right there, which is a gold, a stone, and iron. But he's going to do this because this is so much better for himself right now. He's going to get two tactic knowledges, and he's going to move up again on his Varg faction, this black faction, to get to the very end of the knowledge track. So now he only has to do two battles against those. He made it to the end of this knowledge track, and so, well, he gets the bonus now. He gets three victory points and the top card from the God card deck. So he gets one, two, three. He's now passed me up on victory points. And he gets a top card from the God deck, which is this one right here. So he's going to get one victory point. He does not have to pay the, uh, the cost of the card because, well, he just got this as a bonus. And then he can uh, manipulate the mountain or he can do a building action if he chooses. And so now he has three God cards, so he has reached his limit, actually of guard cards. Of course, if you get more guard cards, you can always choose to just trade them out if you want to. Okay, and then now, he still, so he's made it to the top of this. He still has one more knowledge to gain. And, you know what? Well, let's look here. So he has this black faction that he's working on. And once he starts building up on his uh, warship knowledge, then he can start going out to this island. And, hey, these two red red factions are pretty close to one another. So he's going to go ahead and I think build up some knowledge on the red faction. So he's laying really heavily into war. And it looks like I'm kind of got going more into like the hunting. He's going into war. So we'll see how that works out for each one of us. Okay. So, so that, I think that was the end of his turn. So he moved up on that knowledge track, gained the bonus. Moved up on the red faction track. Yep, so that does that. Now it's back to my turn. Back to my turn, back to my turn. To place our last worker right here. And as you can see, um, just to point out that now, on this other side of the volcano, the, uh, the, the way that you can unlock the, your fourth worker to place on the outer ring of the volcano, it is now on the very top of the volcano. So you would have to, you would have had to done that right at the very beginning of uh, of the round. But let's see, we could do this war action, and this war action is slightly different actually, because you can see it has like this uh, this green card right in front of this war action, and that means if you do war and you're doing war on a forest region, you can do that war action for one less battle on that forest region. So if I was to do a forest, uh, a forest um, battle against here, then instead of doing six, um, six battles, I would I get to do five, even though I'm not moved up on there on the knowledge track. So you get to do one last battle against forest regions. Or I could gain those resources right there, which could be pretty good. Um, I could do a building action or gain those resources. Let's go ahead and do a building action. Because hey, we increased our knowledge on this building, um, on the buildings there. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that, and let's see what our buildings are. We could gain more food each round. We can gain knowledge each round. That's pretty nice. And or we could gain food, gain iron. What are these end game bonuses? Ooh, this end game bonus deals with milestones. So that's going to coordinate very well with my personal objective. Let's do that one. Let's spend the uh, three stone to be able to. Um, yep, let's spend three stone. And now we have to have one left. And now, at the very beginning of next round, I'm going to gain a knowledge in tactics or in technology of my choice. And my plan is to try to be able to pass all six milestones in the island track. So that's another six victory points at the very end of the game, which can be pretty big. 
All right, so I think that was my very last action. So now it goes on to player two. And player two, you know what? He's not going to do this God or War card or uh, War Chief card. He's not going to move a Skull Crusher or gain resources. He's going to go ahead and do some war. And he gets to do it for one less on these glacier, uh, on a glacier region. One less battle. So he's going to go here. And guess what? This black faction ship is on a glacier region. So that means he gets to do it for one less battle again. He's already all the way up on the knowledge for this black faction. So this means instead of doing it for two battles, he only has to do one battle for this war action, which is incredible. That's a pretty cool wombo combo that he just was able to pull off. And so now you get to uh, build up your troops if he wants to. Okay, sorry, I had a quick visitor here at the house, but so we are just about to um, move up on, on, uh, on the troops here for the red player. So he is doing a battle against the black faction here. Only has to do one battle uh, on this glacier um, region. And so he is going to need some uh, raiders and some archers in order to do th these type of battlings. And we just completely ignore this beast card here because this is not a hunt at all. This is war out on this black faction. So, okay, so we need uh, berserkers, archers. Only need to do one battle because of his amazing wombo combo. And you know what he's going to do? He's not even going to spend any resources at all. He's going to activate and pray to this god card right here because he gets one of each warrior. So he's going to go ahead and turn that, indicating that he used it. And he gets to move up on one of each. Just like that. And now he has to do one battle. And remember, he can go ahead and choose to uh, ignore a battle if he wants to. That's his clan ability. If he pulls up a battle card, he does not like what he has to face, then he can go ahead and discard it and draw a new one. And then he has to face that battle. He can only do that once per battle. So um, if he had to like, face up to six different types of battles um, uh, for any faction, then possibly he could redraw six different times. But he can only do it once per battle, okay? So he's going to go ahead and draw this card here. What does he have? Okay, so in order to win this one, he has to spend an archer, he has to spend two berserkers, and if he wants to do the overkill to get seven extra victory points, he would need to spend three archers. So if he wants to, he can say, I don't want to do this at all. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to spend all of these warriors um, in, order to, in, order <clears throat> in order to win this battle, in order to win this war. But he only has one battle to do. He would gain six, seven victory points. But that would deplete all of his soldiers. And this is only the first round of the game. And he wants to do lots of conquering out there. So you know what? Even though it hurts, he, I think he's going to have to give up on this. He's going to go ahead and use his clan ability to discard this card. It is a good card. But he doesn't want to have to deplete that many resources at the very beginning of the game. So he's going to use his clan ability discard this card to draw a new one for his battle and see if he likes that better. And yeah, this, this does work out a little bit better for him. It's not expending so many resources. So he has to get take down an archer and a uh, berserker, or sorry, a raider. So he does one of those and one of those. And he wins the battle, gains one iron, which is nice, that's always nice. And he is successful in this, in this war. He just won the war. He only had to do one war or one battle for this war, which, oh wow, that's incredible. Okay, so we'll get rid of this card here. There we go. And so he conquered this black faction right here. He gets six victory points. And so he goes up. Oh, you know what? He should have gotten one victory point from getting this god card. So he should actually be on eight victory points. Sorry about that. I'm sure you were screaming at me at that point in the video. And so he gains uh, six victory points for this war. One, two, three, four, five, six. And 
um, he gets to put out one of his banners out here on this region right there. And, uh, and he is the very first to conquer on Fenian Island. So he gains this victory point chip as well. So he gets three more victory points. One, two, three. Very, very good. And so he spent all the resources needed for the battling. And I think that was it. That is the end of the war. Well, okay, so that is actually even the end of the round. So now it is on to the feast. And remember, so now it is on to the feast, and I get to do, I can choose to do it twice. I can feast twice, which is great. So, and I can do them in any order. The, uh, both of my feasts, I can do in any order that I like. I can do the same ones twice in a row, or I can do one once and then choose another one. But you know what I'm going to choose? I'm going to go ahead and discard my trophy. I'm going to get six resources of my choice. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just discard this out of the game. No longer have that trophy. And so let's go ahead and get um, one, two, three, four, five, um, five, six. Let's go ahead and prepare to get spend resources for our soldiers here. So we got stocked up in there, that's six extra resources. But now it's, it's time to feast. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get those nine victory points. We're gonna spend one of each type of resource. So one there, one there, one there, and one there. Nine victory points. So nine plus six is fifteen points. <sighs> And uh, so now we get a second, we get to do the second feast for our clan power. We normally only get to do it once, but because our green clan allows us to do the feast twice, what should we do? Should we spend resources again? That would bring us pretty low on all these, uh, on all these resources, but we can probably gain them back on the volcano, or we could just gain resources. Or we could just spend one of each of these and get four victory points. Hmm. And then this next time is, is a demon, so we'll have time to gather up more resources to do these other feasts out here. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go ahead and just spend one of each of these. One food, one wood, and one stone. Let's not run ourselves too low. And that's four victory points. One, two, three, four. We don't want to get too behind our second player friend here. But then again, we don't want to get too low on resources. So that's not too bad. Let's do that. And player two gets to do the feast as well. And, and he's going to go ahead and do one food, one wood, and one iron. Because he's starting to get pretty low on gold. And maybe he wants to get a war chief card later in the game and stuff. So... One down, one down here, and one down there. We'll give him four victory points. One, two, three, four. So he heads back into the lead, but that's okay. It's still very early on in the game. And uh, <clears throat> so that's the end of this feast card. And now we have to collect our champions back out here. Collect those ones and these red ones here. Great. And we have to turn the second ring of the volcano twice to the left. So, one and two. So now the volcano is a little bit different for the next round. Well, okay. So, um, just to point out, in case I, I made it sound like that, if I would have gone here to this Skull Crusher, if I would have moved my Skull Crusher three times, I said that earlier in the video, I could have moved him three times earlier in the video, and I can move him to any, any direction that I want to. I don't have to just go on swamps, um, like I could have gone here, one, two, three. I could have gone there to this next beast token if I wanted to. Um, I would have taken three battles against that swamp monster. Or I could have just chosen to gone to one of these adjacent ones which could have been a good idea. I would have had to do two battles against this snake or three battles against this yeti-looking thing 
or two battles against this bear. So, so just to point that out, just to clarify, I could have gone to one of those regions, um, but it would have, I would have had to pay more soldiers to do those battlings. So that's why I chose not to. But hey, now in the future, I can start heading out here and, and get, get this beast out here if I want to. Okay, so overall, this is a very, very good expansion. Um, it's really enjoyable, adds nice replayability and more paths to victory. Um, but something I do want to point out, here it is. So something I do want to point out. Once again, I mentioned this in my original final thoughts. That some of the, uh, some of the coloring and just like the graphic design is hard to tell apart from one another. So in the rule book, it points out like what the colors indicate. Let's see if I can find it. I like what the colors indicate. Like uh, this is like the glacier color and the, the green is for the forests and this dark brown is for mountains. And then it indicates right here that swamps is just kind of like light brown. And this light brown is just so close. It is so close to this mountain color. It's just so hard to tell apart just by looking at it. You have to really stare at it. And furthermore, like if you look at this, because this is the swamp card, this light brown, I'm not sure why they didn't make it some sort of like silver or gray color because that's what these swamp cards uh, look like. These are like a dark gray. So I'm not sure why they made a light brown here when it just looks so close. This is the light brown and that's the dark brown. It just looks so close to one another. But overall, um, the expansion is excellent. That's just another kind of artistic graphic design um, type issue there. And, uh, and I think they might have overlooked this here too, like in the rule book, like this swamp should be underneath this, they should have just flipped those, flipped those words around. Anyway, instead of me rambling on, it is a very good expansion. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Siegfried131 for pointing this and giving us the suggestion to go through this. It was a, a very good suggestion, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Look out for any other videos that I might put out in the, in the days to follow. All right, you guys have a good one.